Welcome, friends, Lost Carpe, and it's time for the Overwatch Hero Guide 2! Widowmaker! That's right, it's time for the most hated hero in the game. No one is hated more than Widowmaker. If you're really good with her, the other team hates you. If you're not that good with her, your team hates you. And sometimes, even when you're good, both teams hate you because some people just don't understand how effective she is. So this is, of course, going to be more geared towards beginners. I'm going to talk about accuracy, practicing Widowmaker. I'm going to talk about... Uh, positioning with her and understanding presence when you're a sniper. Presence is something that is a little more cerebral, but if you understand what a sniper brings to a team, you can do a lot of work for things. So as always, we can go over who she is, her abilities, uh, how you play her in combat, again talking about accuracy, positioning, and presence, mode duties for her in attack, defense, and of course in control. Then we'll go over tips and tricks with her, talking about just how many shots it takes to take some people out, some of the tricks you can do with her, and then we'll end it out with a conclusion to wrap it all up. So, let's get going. Who is Widowmaker? Well, her name is Amelie LaCroix, age 33, occupation, assassin. So she was the wife of a member of Overwatch that was spearheading operations against Talon. When they failed to kill him, they captured his wife and brainwashed her into becoming an assassin for Talon. She murdered her husband and became Talon's top assassin. Fun fact, they messed with her physiology, which is why she looks like a spider and she's unaffected by cold. Yep, that's the reason. So Widowmaker is a sniper. That means you live and die by accuracy, positioning, and presence. Widowmaker can kill 19 heroes with a single headshot, so accuracy is very important. Positioning is necessary to keep you alive. If you stay in one point, you become predictable and killable and dodgeable. Presence is the fear that a sniper brings to a field. When the enemy knows where you are shooting, they will be more erratic or careful because they're worried about getting shot in the head. Your team can take advantage of that. And that's really what's important about snipers is they can kill people instantly. They also can get killed pretty easily as well if they're not careful, and they can make a team scared. And that is very useful. Widowmaker's Abilities So first up has got to be her rifle, the Widow's Kiss. Now when it's scoped, it does 12 damage, uncharged, and when you charge it 100%, it does 120 damage. Now if you do a headshot, it does 300 damage because there's an extra bonus to it when it does headshots. It takes 0.75 seconds to charge the full, so you can shoot people pretty quickly to go for those extra damage. And just to remind you, 19 heroes die to headshots from Widowmaker. Just one shot to do it. The other ones will take two shots. Except D.Va who takes more because, you know, mech and then out of mech. Now when she's unscoped, she just has a regular rifle. And it is a rapid fire rifle that deals 13 damage a shot. You have 30 bullets in this thing, so you can do 390 damage altogether when you're fighting a target if you have to. Next is her grappling hook. This is her left shift ability. It is a 20 meter long hook that pulls her to a server she is aiming at. So it'll pull you somewhere, it gives you access to higher ledges. Just high ground, sometimes you also just use the jump up and do some work as well. You can also aim it towards the ground or a wall in front of you to just go somewhere a little bit faster. That is an option you have. Then there's her E ability, which is Venom Mine. This is a mine that sticks to the first surface it touches. It does 75 damage over 5 seconds. It's just useful to just hurt an enemy if they get close to you so you have to rifle them to death. And as an early warning system. Besides that, it's not that useful because, well, enemies can just go somewhere else after taking the damage to get healed up because it's 5 seconds time before the 75 damage hits them full, and that's enough time to find health at times. And lastly is her ultimate Infrasight. It gives her team vision of the enemy team for 15.5 seconds. This is hugely useful, because if you know where the enemy team is, that sets up for your attacks, for your teammates' attacks, ultimates, just a lot of things. Being able to get the drop on the enemy can be huge. Widowmaker in combat. So the simple version, headshot the other team. Aim where the enemy team is and take out whoever you can. Preferably, you want to take out the enemy healers so that their team can be easier to crush. Most of them have lots of wide open areas or corridors for snipers to shoot. Figure out where most of the enemy is located and find a place to shoot at them from, and that should help you out pretty well. Now, if you're confident in your aim, you can look for a flanking position to catch the enemy behind their front line. But you must land your shots, because once you fire a shot, someone will turn around to come after you. And if you're unlucky, a lot of them are going to turn around to come after you. There's an advantage to that, though, because that draws people away from the front line. Now when it comes to your mind, you should be using it as an early warning system or just to cover your back for any enemy flankers that might be coming after you. That's just something to keep in mind. Also, you want to use your hook to change locations or quickly escape from flankers as well. You just got to keep thinking about, if something comes after me, what do I have to do to deal with them? You can also just stand and fight. That is an option. But usually you want to just get away because when they get the drop on you, you're going to be in trouble. Now also you want to use your ultimate whenever you feel it is going to be good for you and your teammates to be benefited best. If you're the only one alive and you're not really near the enemy team, don't just drop it. You gotta use it when you think you'll use it. And also when your teammates can take advantage of it. You don't necessarily need to be the only one that takes advantage of it. You could just respawn and then use it right then and there because your teammates could be in a spot where they can take advantage of it and win the game with it. 
Now lastly, I want to talk about presence. You want to make your presence known. If the enemy knows there's a sniper shooting at them, they'll become more cautious of being out in the open, and they'll start zigzagging to make it harder to get hit. But this will also make it harder for them to aim, because they're going back and forth. So your team should be able to take advantage of that. Now if you can flank snipe from a distance, it will split enemy attention and make them vulnerable like I said earlier, so that is something worth considering, but you want to make sure your team knows that, so that if enemies start drawing off the front lines to come after you, they're able to just crush the front line and be able to push them back. And that just requires some coordination and some forethought. Mode duties. Now in capture, hybrid, and payload on attack, your job is simple. Snipe everyone you can. Shoot enemies not protected by shields, you can weaken the shields if you want, or you look for a sniping position that will flank the enemy so it draws their attention you can maybe get some more kills. Shoot, relocate, shoot, just keep drawing the enemy's attention whenever you can until you get the point with your team. Now you don't have to be on the point yourself, but you can be there to just get shots at the enemy or be somewhere away to just shoot the enemy. It's just more helpful when you're on the point because you can add to just capture time, but it's not always the best thing to do. Sometimes you should be flanking the enemy as they're trying to take the point away from you. Now when you're pushing the payload, you can actually hide behind the payload and snipe the enemy. It's something you can do because then you know where the enemy's going to be coming towards. But the disadvantage of that is, well, you're going to be attacked because you're on the payload. You can also snipe while you're away from the payload shooting at the enemies, but the payload's going to be constantly moving so it might get to a position where you're not going to be able to take advantage of it. But that's the give and take of being in that position. And as always, when it comes to the ultimate, you want to use your vision when it feels best to serve yourself and your team. Now when it comes to defense, snipe everyone you can. You can snipe while standing behind choke point, shield, near or far away. You can also take up a flanking sniper position. Shoot, relocate, shoot as needed. When it comes to the payload, you know where your targets are. They're going to be on the payload. Some of them might actually be off of it, just like you would want to be off it on attack. So you got to look for them and take them out while also taking out the people on the payload, just depending on what's going on. Just figure out the angles. What's important is you want to draw the enemy's attention off the payload a little bit. Try to get them to look your way as well so that they have split attention so that they're attacked from two different sides. Now when it comes to control, again, snipe everyone you can. If they're dead, they can't capture the point. That's simple as that. When defending, it's up to you if you want to defend from the point or a flanking position to kill them as they come to the point. When you're attacking the point, shoot everyone off the point. Kill them from multiple angles if you can. The great thing about control maps are there's a lot of wide open area, so you can shoot the point from a lot of different areas to make the enemy a little paranoid about where you are and also open them up for your teammates to do some attacking as well. That's what I really like about control points are they give you just a lot of positions you can use. Tips and tricks with Widowmaker. Now the first tips you gotta give out is gotta be use the practice range to practice, then practice on bots, practice on body shots to get familiar with hero movements. Just practice on all that stuff before you go for the headshots because that'll help you just get better at just knowing how enemies move and where to shoot at them. Now there's another thing you can do when you're shooting at people and that is Mercy plus Widowmaker. It just does amazing damage. With that you can do with body shots if you want or headshots. Headshots with that against tanks will do amazing damage. Now something to keep in mind that I've mentioned before, 19 heroes die in one headshot, the rest in two. The one exception is D.Va because she has armor and HP at 600, so you'll do 300 damage with two headshots, but because of her armor, it doesn't do enough to destroy the mech. So you have to hit it with one more shot to get rid of the mech itself, and then you have to shoot D.Va herself because, well, now she's out of the mech. Something important to keep in mind is that you can also weaken tanks for your teammates. You're doing 120 damage at a fully charged shot, 300 on a headshot, so you can weaken a tank to half HP if you have to, especially if there's no healers to take out. If there's just a tank there, or they're a threat right now, you can go for them to weaken them for teammates, and that really helps everyone out. Something else to keep in mind is that your rifle is still deadly unscoped. Some people just resign themselves to getting killed when they get flanked. You can kill people with that rifle. It is amazing how much damage it does. Another thing has to do with your mind, you can use it offensively and defensively. You can throw it into a crowd to do some damage for the team because it's a big splash attack. Or you can use it defensively to protect yourself. While speaking about mine, something else you should consider is dropping the mine when you're in a fight with a flanker, just someone's on you. That mine will go off, it does 75 damage against them, nothing to you. And you can just rifle them to death, hopefully, and then you're okay. Now this one's very important. Keep calm when flanked. Your headshots do 300 damage. If you can somehow give them while the enemy's on you, that's 300 damage. You can kill a lot of people coming up close to you. Even Winston. He jumps on you, two headshots, and he is going to have only 5 or 10 HP left because of his armor. And then you just melee him and he's gone. That's all you got to do. Two headshots in a melee and Winston is dead. You can do that the amount of time it takes him to kill you. It is doable. Another is keep in mind where you can hook to escape. Just when you're being attacked, just where can I use my hook to get away very quickly if a flank does happen? Another one is change positions regularly if possible. This is just to keep in mind that if you make yourself unpredictable, it's going to be harder for the enemies to attack you. And it's going to be harder for them to know where your shots are coming from. And lastly, use your ultimate when you and your team can use it best. Sometimes maybe you should be selfish with it, but sometimes it's good to use it for your team. In conclusion, make your presence known. 
kill your enemies quickly and relocate to keep them guessing. The first thing you want to work on is accuracy for sure, after that positioning, and then finally understanding the advantages of presence. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that no matter how good you are, teammates don't understand snipers. That's just how it is. Even if you're being effective, they might think you're not doing anything, which is frustrating. So you have to accept that as you play Widowmaker, sometimes teammates just don't understand. So what you gotta do is you gotta prove them wrong by just playing well. But if you actually are terrible right now, maybe you should switch out of Widowmaker and come back to her next match, because sometimes you will be off. Sometimes you're maybe just not warmed up yet, or maybe you just are a little nervous for some reason this match. It's not a bad thing to switch out of Widowmaker if you're just not being effective with her, because sometimes that's just how it is. She is very much on the edge of being amazing and not amazing, depending on how well you're doing things. Now there's one last thing to mention that I didn't want to mention anywhere else because this is a really hard thing to do, and that is the hook into sniper shot move. Where you hook to a surface, it puts you up into the air, you scope, and then you shoot someone midair. It's really cool, nice for style points, but it's not something I recommend for beginners because it's just really hard to do. It can save a game sometimes where you just got to get that shot from somewhere far away, and the only way to do it is the hook shot. But that is for the experts. That is definitely for the experts. When you're extremely confident in your shooting, then you can try to do it. Just practice it in uh, practice mode for a while, then try to do it for real, and it can do wonders for your team. But it is not something you should be trying to do unless you absolutely have to. So there you go, Widowmaker Guide done. She's just a very fun hero to play, but she is on the edge of being very effective or not that effective. And your teammates can affect that, that is for sure. And I hope more people understand just what Widowmaker can do and bring to the team besides just headshotting people. So up next is going to be D.Va, and well, D.Va's D.Va. She is a very strong tank in this game that can wipe out teams, be very annoying to the enemy, she can do a lot of work, she is an amazing tank, so that's what's going to come up next. So as always, I had fun making this guide, hope you had fun watching and learning from it, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun, thanks for coming by, and see you next time.